are back to talk about budgeting. Now I know that this is one of the major areas in most people's lives, especially today with prices going up on things, on the other side of a, a national crisis, a lot of people are expressing concern about the money stuff. So we're gonna give you some strategies today with number one, how to set up a budget, number two, how to maintain that budget, and number three, how to make that budget work for you and your family in case you missed it. I am Miss T with Studio T. I'm Diana with Pantry Overflow. I'm Jessica with Blog About It All. I'm Siobhan with Creed 22 Consulting. And everything that we teach you is not stuff that we got out of textbooks, no. it's stuff that we literally lived and tested for years. And I know these ladies here, we've known each other easily 15 years, and we practice these strategies together. So our goal is to help you develop strategies that work for your family, work for your finances, and work for your fun. So let's get started. What is ground zero, step zero, number step one to building your budgets? What did you start with? I started with a budget coach, a budget mentor, a budget buddy, and they actually walked me through how to do a budget sheet. But what do you guys think? Where, where, where's your ground zero starting point for your budgets? Go for it, go for it, go for I it. I wanna say ground zero, you have to start writing down every penny you spend. Cause a lot of times when you're getting started, you have no idea. You have no idea what you spend on groceries, on gas, on out to eat. You have no, I was shocked when our husband, when my husband and I first wrote down what we spent going out to eat in fast food, I was like, oh my goodness, are you kidding me? We spend that much? I would never have guessed. So first start writing down, what do you spend? What and that's simple, that's right. not even hard thing. Get, you know, printer paper or notebook paper or post-its, I'm a post-it fan. Man. and just write that stuff down. Save your receipts, actually get a receipt. Yes. I know when I was in on a budget and I would get, I wouldn't even keep the receipts. Right. I didn't wanna know what I was spending. I would just have to be spending until my bank account was in the negative. So get a receipt and actually write everything down that yes. you're spending and it doesn't have to be anything fancy. It could just be a regular sheet of paper. How about you, Siobhan? Yeah, and I think it's important to write it down for the whole month. Because if you, if you know, sometimes you're able to start at the very beginning of the month and that works perfectly. Sometimes not until the middle, but to get a whole month worth of your, of, of your expenses, because then you can take it from there and figure out what you're actually spending in the month. That's yes. awesome. What do you think, Diane? Yeah, well, that if you don't know how much, a lot of people don't know exactly how much they make or exactly how much they spend, so you need to figure that out first. So if you have to go look at your paycheck steps or look at your bank account deposits, you know, do you get paid in cash? Do you get checks? How many streams of income do you have? So you can get a picture of how much your income actually is. And then if it varies, then you need to kind of figure out like, what do you need to live on? And then once you get your actual amounts of what you spend, then you need to decide, do you want to keep it there? Do you need to cut anything? Do you need to add anything in? Is your life balanced? You know, what do you really like want that. to do? Um, I put mine in my phone in an app of budgeting, so I don't, I'm not a big paper person. Oh, I'm such a paper person. So, <laughs> you know, whatever works for you. If it doesn't work for you to, you know, the whole point is what works, works for, for you. you. What, what is system? gonna keep it yes. from overwhelming you? Yes. What's the easiest <clears throat> way for you to maintain keeping a budget as yep. time goes on? So, yep. and sometimes how you start off, you know, you'll change it and try different yes. ways. And Definitely. you'll eventually find what works for you and it becomes easier and easier just like with anything once you keep doing it yeah and i think i like that you said not only writing down what you spend but also writing down what comes in i am an entrepreneur and i always got side hustles going on i'm always building new business new entre entrepreneurship so one of the challenges for me in the beginning all of this was tracking what was coming in i was more living in response to the fires that were presenting themselves so if something was going to get cut off oh okay i gotta go make this amount of money so this doesn't get cut off if we're running out of food oh okay i gotta go make this amount of money in order to cover the fact that we need to eat so i was not tracking uh, just my expenses but i also wasn't tracking my income so making it a, a very uh that's very important that you track both and then document both and i would say the other thing is you said um just knowing what you have coming in 
is key because then you can build your budget, not uh, not limit yourself based on what you have coming in, but knowing what you have coming in helps you to be, build a real budget and then you'll know how to grow from there. And she said that you can change your system. So again, I started out with just a regular sheet of paper, but now because of the growth of my company, because of the growth of responsibilities that I have with my family um, expense wise, I have several budget sheets and I actually this year had to hire somebody to manage the company's budget because we went from one company to seven. So just knowing that what kind of help you need and what kind of system you need is key. I started with a post-it, a sheet of paper, then a budget sheets. Now I have budget teams. Anybody else want to expand on that? Yeah, um, a lot of times too, your monthly bills don't change, your rent, your utilities, you know, all that basic stuff stays the same, but the things that do change are your groceries and your gas. So even if you start there and just keep a separate notepad or a journal that you keep in your car and every time you go to the grocery store, whatever, you write down how much you spend on groceries, how much you spend on gas. One other thing is learn how to break up groceries because too often, especially nowadays, it didn't always used to be that, but now we go to the one store for everything. That's for yeah. toiletries, toilet yeah. paper, everything. Oh, that's funny. It didn't used to right? be like that. It Isn't that funny? Yes. You know what? I think that's so funny that you just said that because I remember going to Safeway for this, yes. going to this store for this, going to Walmart for this, but you're right. right. Now There's we so many one-stop one shops and, and we you get can everything. get everything. But a lot of so times, important. then you don't know, okay, what is groceries? What is household? And a lot of times you don't spend the same amount on like dishwasher detergent or cleaning supplies. Sometimes you only have to refresh your cleaning supplies, you know, once every three months instead of every month. So it just depends on the situation or whatever, but mm -hmm. just knowing, breaking that up and knowing what is actual groceries and what is actual household goods will help you plan better for that as for well. For your budgeting, yes. for setting up your budget sheet. Okay, so tell me, what is the importance to you of a system of accountability? I know in getting started with all of this, I could write this stuff down. I could do all of this on my own, but it wasn't until I got right. someone to mentor me, a budget buddy, just somebody that I could sit down with once a week that would go over my numbers with me to say, okay, we need to tighten this up here. Okay, we did really good here. And okay, I think we need to look at getting some more added streams of income if your plan is to take this trip in the fall and do this extra thing for your kids. It was sitting down with someone on a regular basis that really helped me to grow in sticking to my budget and getting more increase from all my different resources. So I know um, I've done that with Jessica. I've also done that with Diana. In fact, that's one of the ways that I was able to be successful in what I'm doing financially is because we sat down regularly and they would give me tips and strategies. So what are your guys' thoughts on the importance of an accountability system? Absolutely. You're going to be more faithful. You're going to be more responsible. You're going to be more accountable to yourself if you meet with someone. And I say weekly. It's, it's easy to say, oh, let's meet once a month or whatever. And but don't meet with your friend that's going to no. tell you, oh, girl, it's okay. Right. Go get those right. cookies. Right. Don't uh -huh. meet with, it's true. Don't meet with meet her. someone that says, um, do you realize how many times you stopped at Target? You need to stop this. Right. Stop mm -hmm. stopping at Target 10 mm -hmm. times. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this is not okay. Yeah, but you have to. And also just have Having a fresh set of eyes look at your numbers sometimes helps you realize what is important, what you need to cancel. I, especially in the beginning, when you're meeting with a budget person, they might say, do you need that gym membership? Are you using it? Yeah. What about yep. those newspapers, magazines, stuff that you can cancel out, ways to save money to do what you say you really want to do. Yep. So you need that fresh set of eyes. to. And that reminder, that. that reminder yes. that is this really what you want to do? Yes. Or right. is this really re what you want to do? Yes. So I think for me, it was a constant reminder of, this is your goal, but you're doing this and this doesn't point to your goal. Yes. So it was kind of, well, wait a second. You said you wanted to do this. And in me being reminded of this goal of getting out of debt, yeah. it made me want to eat out less and yes. prepare meals at home, which helped me learn how to save money and really be strategic with what I'm doing at home by way of meal planning and not stopping and eating out. And it helped me get, it led to me getting out of debt, but it was having that system of accountability. And I know Siobhan, you you are a budget buddy to people. Tell me some of the ways that you get them started in that system of, of accountability. So, you know, I think it's very important to be able to talk things out. And number one, I mean, that was probably the, you know, very early on what I really gathered from it, the, what mm -hmm. I took from it the most, because 
There were so many times that I got discouraged or so many times that you really just need someone to talk things out with. And so that's what I understand what you're going through. Absolutely. Yes. And, And that is very important. And so that is what I try to help people understand is that I'm here to talk things out. If you have a problem, if you're discouraged, if you're if frustrated, you're stuck. if you're stuck <laughs> right. and they're in those moments come. Yes. And so that, you know, I really stress the fact that I'm here to help you. You're not in this alone. And I think sometimes we think because it, it gets overwhelming only when we think we're in it by ourselves. Or you made the mess and you got to clean correct. up the mess yes. on your own. Right. Yes. yes, correct. Right, yes. it's true. I've worked with someone recently who have has a big mess, a great amount of debt, and they're just like, I don't know how we're going to do it. I make this much and what comes in is what goes out. But because I came in with that fresh set of eyes and it was like, okay, what if just this month you, you know, switch this few things around and yes. they were able to pay off their credit card. That's awesome. Which they didn't see how they were going to do it. That was on their thing. But, you know, then the next month going forward, that's one less payment they're going to have. I know people, you know, when you get those bank fees or just those unexpected things and they're just like, well, that's a bank fee. No, call the bank. Tell them. Yes, yes. Take that off. But, you know, when you're just another fee, another expense, and I don't have the money already, those, you know, you don't see a way out. But when somebody comes in with you, they see a way out and they're going to help you get out. And then it'll it'll break that, those wrong thoughts in your mind like Siobhan said talking it out how did we get into this mess how are we going to get out and stay out yes and I think she just hit a key point about asking yes one of the biggest things that you can do is negotiate discounts negotiate new rates negotiate fee reversals more often than not banks, um, organizations that you're getting your your utility companies, they want you as a customer. So if you haven't asked, there's so much power in simply asking for for the discount, asking for any specials. Do you have any specials going on? Are there any ways that we can save? And I know one of the things that we brought up on one of our episodes was talking about how you can save on your utilities. There's so many plans now where you can save on your utilities. You guys want to touch on that? a bit yes i want to touch real quick on the negotiating you should always negotiate every year your car insurance and your cell phone those are like the biggest ones and cable tv now especially because there's so yeah, many there's so much streaming providers. you can yes, stream so they streaming. want you as they a customer want you as a customer mm-hmm. so and your internet is another one yeah but always every year and shop around don't be afraid to shop around and call other companies and say okay well this is what i'm paying what will you do what will you yeah, match for yeah. me what will you what other you know benefits will you throw on there for me so definitely negotiate and on the much monthly budget billing thing system Mm -hmm. this helps so much with your um, air conditioning bill and your heating bill because normally you know you have the high rise of air conditioning bills during the summer and then the high rise during winter with the heating bills but if you get on the automatic they just adjust it average based on your average spending per the year and then it's the same amount every single month and you don't have to worry about these big spikes. The fluctuation. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. It just makes it so much simpler. So call your provider for your electricity or your gas or your heat or any of that kind of stuff. And I think that's key. It does take some legwork on your part. Yes. It will take some time for you to sit and negotiate these things. Yes. But how often can you do something like that that's going to result in you saving money? And then again, you don't, this is not just an air area where you can apply this in your utilities yes. and your, you know, those, those major expenditures, but you can also consider something like, um, trade serv- ser- trade services, things that you would typically pay for if you have a skill and you can trade for that skill and you don't have to pay for it. Yes. That's also something to consider. I did a lot of trade work and I was even able to get groceries sometimes for doing photography. So even considering some of those natural talents that you have and trading them for services in return, all of this is designed to give you you uh, more room to use your money for building uh, your financial um, wealth forward and taking care of what you need uh, to have taken care of today. Now, again, we started with tracking all of your expenses and tracking your income. Super simple. You can do that on a sheet of paper. You can do that on a budget form. There's lots of options for that out there. We also said, make sure that you're taking advantage and negotiating for the best possible rate for you, your family, your cars, your home, your rent, all of those different things. Remember, they want you as a customer at your fees. Ask, ask. There's so much power in asking for a fee reversal, or do you have any lower uh, monthly rates on a checking account? All of those things are not impossible. They're totally doable, but they don't happen unless you empower yourself to ask. And then lastly, 
find a system of accountability that works for you. This is something where I, I believe is the game changer. Whenever you can sit down with a coach, a mentor, a budget buddy, and they keep you on track, they keep you reminded of your goals, and then they allow you to talk out the stress points or the stick points, and then coach you through it, that's key. And yes. we're suggesting a weekly connect not something you do once a month, once a year, but something you do on a regular basis. The goal is to get you where you're dreaming to go and not stuck where you are right now. There's always the opportunity for growth and success and advancement, and that's what we want for you. So just remember, these are just some mild approaches to getting started with your budget. We'll have so many more tips for you going forward. Thank you for tuning in and we'll be back for the next opportunity to grow in your family and your finances and fun.